Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Text Marquee Block, which is part of our Key Blocks for Gutenberg plugin. With the Text Marquee Block, you can, well, make text marquees, or these bands of constantly gliding text. As with any text based element, this block comes with all kinds of typography options and a variety of style settings. From the examples on this page, you can see the text marquee block is easy to combine with other page elements, particularly other blocks from the key blocks collection. You can set it in a section with other content or leave it to stand on its own. This block will look good either way. Now that we've seen a few possibilities for its use, let's take a look at the block itself. Head over to the back end. You'll need a page to work in. I prepared this one. It has an image I added as a background. This was done using a block as well, and you can find your blocks by clicking here. It opens the block selection. This is where you can find all the blocks you have on your site. That includes everything from Gutenberg's native blocks to key blocks, as well as anything else you may have installed. You'll be able to tell key blocks apart from the rest easily. They have reddish pink icons, which make them easy to distinguish. So you can find the block you want here and then add it to the page via simple drag and drop. But that's not the only way to add a block to your page. Let me close this. Before I show you another way, let's briefly go over what I did to set up my background image. I used the advanced column block from key blocks, picked its content to be full width, set it to have only one column, and then used the style tabs options to upload the background image to this field here. And that image is positioned to be in center center and set to no repeat. Finally, its background size is covered, so the image gets to keep its aspect ratio while covering the given dimensions. Finally, in the advanced tab, I set paddings for the top and bottom of my advanced column to give the image more room height-wise. And that was my background prep work. Let me add a text marquee block to this now. And I'll do that by clicking on this faintly visible plus sign in the middle of my advanced column. As you can see, this opens a pop-up window with a feature that allows me to search through all my blocks and the view of all my recently used blocks. Since text marquee is one of those, I'll click on it to add it to the page. Okay, there we go. This is what the block looks like by default. It has some dummy text, which if you look at the options on the right, you'll see is divided into three items. And when you want to customize the marquee, you'll start with the items. So all of this that I'm talking about is in the content tab. From there, I'll open item one. We can see it contains a text field with some dummy text in it. I'll delete it so I can add my own instead. I plan to do that for all three items and even add a fourth one. For now, let me just type this in. Okay. Underneath this, we can see there are typography settings to be made. This is an option that appears in each of the items. So you can set variations in style, font, or anything you like for your marquee items. However, I plan to keep all my bits of text uniform, so I prefer making any typography changes in the Style tab, where those changes will be applied to all items at once. Still, since we're here, let's go over what options are contained under Typography. There are several of them, as you can see. The first is Font Family, where we can pick a new font for the item text. There are hundreds of fonts that you can choose from. Then, after that, we have the font size. We can make our text bigger or smaller and use pixels, ems, rems, or the viewport width as units of measure. Next, with the weight option, we can turn our text thin, light, normal, bold, or anything in between. Just pick whichever one of the settings in this dropdown suits you best. Following that, we have the transform option. We can use it to turn our text from its default setting, which in this case is normal, to uppercase, lowercase, or capitalized. Then there's the style option, where we can change the text style from the default normal to italic or oblique. Following that, there's the decoration option that lets us add a line under, over, or through our text. Though, as you can see, there is no decoration by default. Finally, we have the line height and letter spacing options in case there are any changes or issues with spacing that we want to adjust. And that's it for the options under typography. I'll close this now. And then skip ahead while I customize the other items. Okay, here we are. I added a fourth item using the add item button to fit all the content I wanted. 
With that done, we can carry on. Our next option is Separator Icon. It allows us to add an icon that would stand between the different text items within the marquee. Any icon you add needs to be in SVG format. I'll demonstrate using one from my media library, this one. Select, and there it is on the page. The icon I added is going to stand between the different bits of text as an item separator. And if you decide to use the separator icon, then you'll get an additional option in the style tab. Let me show you. It's this icon size option here, and we can use it to adjust the size of the icon we've added. As I don't plan to use an icon, I'll clear this now, and do the same for the icon itself. Please note, as soon as I remove the icon, I'll use the icon size option in the style tab. So don't be surprised when you don't see it later on. Okay, and moving on. The next option we have is the animation duration. The value is in seconds and it's set to 20 by default. This is the amount of time it takes for all your items to complete a loop in the marquee. I'll set 200 instead so we can see how it slows the whole thing down. There, the text is virtually crawling now. This is far too slow for what I have in mind, so I'll go back to using the default 20 seconds. Okay, after that, we have the reverse direction. This option allows us to switch the direction that the text moves in. If I switch this to yes, my text will start moving from left to right, instead of from right to left. I'll set this back to no. Okay, following this, we have the advanced section, and the additional CSS classes option in it. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to your element when creating CSS that would style it. And that's it for the Content tab. Moving on to the Style tab. The first option here is the Text Color. We have this color picker for easy replacement. I'll use it to add a hex code for the color I want. Plain white. Just a sec. Okay, there we go. After that, we have the Text Typography settings. We've gone over the options here already when looking at the content tab, so I won't waste your time by doing that again. Instead, I'll make the replacement I need and we can carry on. The font size is going to be 120 pixels. Alright, that's the only change I wanted to make. And you can see it affected the text across the different items, which is why I made it here rather than earlier when we were in the content tab. The next thing we have is the enable text stroke effect option. By switching this to yes, the text changes its look and becomes outlined. Now the switch made the text painter, but that's easily changed if you like the effect. For example, we can change the text stroke width, which is the thickness of the outline. If I set 3 pixels, the outline gets bolder. And we can also change its color using this familiar color picker. But none of this is part of my plan design, so I'll reset this. Clear the width and disable the stroke effect. Alright, my text is back. This brings us to the last option, text side spacing. With this option, we can change the amount of space between the individual text items. So if I set 150 pixels here, we can see a larger gap has appeared between the different bits of text. Still, this amount of space is too much for my design, so I'll set 67 pixels instead. And that's it for the style tab. We only have the advanced tab left. The options here are something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and they serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background border and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the text marquee blocks, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. Which means I'm done, so I'll hit update to save my work. And then we can look at the other examples of this block's design. On the page we started from, you'll find a number of variations of the text marquee block, showing you the numerous ways you can use and style it. Whether you combine it with other blocks or let it stand, mostly on its own as I did, the text marquee block is sure to boost the appeal of any page. And now that you've seen all its options, you know all you need to use it. We hope you found this overview of the block's options useful. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.